Raiders will be featured on the next edition of Hard Knocks this August. This news, despite owner Mark Davis saying it would be disruptive to be on the show. Mm. No doubt the Silver and Black will provide plenty of storylines with John Gruden, Antonio Brown, Vontez Perfect and company. I think it's going to be hilarious for the fans to watch, but Shannon, is this good or bad for the Raiders? Well, it's just useful for what it is. As long as the guys don't try to play to the cameras, you'll be just fine. Um, I remember we were the first team to do it uh, back in 2001 when I was with the Ravens. And eventually you just forget they're there and you just carry on with your normal day. Uh, but then as I watched it over the years, I see guys try to play towards the cameras. As you mentioned, Jen, they have a lot of personality led by their head coach and all the mm -hmm. facial expressions that he make. Uh, A.B., Vontez Burfick, Richie Incognito. So, Skip, they have the cast of characters that you need to have a great hard knocks. Mm -hmm. As long as they don't play to the cameras, everything will work out just fine. A.B. will play to the camera every second. John Gruden will play to this camera every second. That's who they are, what they do. And I think it'll be good for them. It will not be a distraction because it's going to help revitalize their mystique. Mark Davis also said that everybody wants to be a Raider. Now they can find out what it takes to become one. Well, I'm not going to go that far, but you can see inside them. And I think it'll put them a little bit back on the map. Do I expect them to be a playoff team? I do not. Because remember, 13 of the Hard Knocks teams, only five have made the playoffs, and only two have even won a playoff game. So it can be a distraction, but they, they need it. You you did. Yeah, but you guys were defending we champs. We did. <laughs> we were. Skip, and that, that was his dad, Mark Davis's dad. That was the thing he would always ask any player. So you want to be a Raider? <laughs> and so he wants to say, hey, that we're gonna find out, Skip. We're gonna find out what it takes to be a Raider. Yeah, great okay. stuff, guys. That's gonna do it for us today, though. We will be back on FS. I won again today. At 9:30 Eastern. Woo. Have Skip, a I just great keep Wednesday, you. everybody. Undisputed. Monday night by a point, but they're still just one win away from their first NBA title. The Warriors are favored by two and a half tomorrow night at home, but they're gonna have to get it done without Kevin Durant. We're joined once again by Rick Buecher. Rick, do you expect Toronto to close things out tomorrow night? I do. Uh, ultimately, I had the going into the series. I had the Warriors in six. I thought that the rest, after knocking out Portland, was going to allow them to recover and they could see the finish line. But I've seen this all year with this team. It's not that they're mentally not willing. It's that they are physically unable. And to Skip's point earlier about who's got the closers and who's got the proven closers. The Warriors obviously do, and that showed itself in Game 5. But that's if the game is close. That's if it becomes a single possession game. The reality is that hasn't been the case. And having been at Game 4, I was stunned in that game, knowing that they needed it. The Warriors got to a point where it wasn't about offense. It was, we can't stop Toronto. I agree. Defensively, yeah. they're getting, yeah, can we outshoot them from three? Yes, but they're getting layups. Serge Ibaka is dominant. If we miss, Serge Ibaka is there to finish. And ultimately, I believe that combination of being able to score in, inside easily because of their size advantage and defensively, their ability to ratchet things up is going to be the difference maker. They were in position to finish this in Toronto, even with those closers, and ultimately couldn't get it done as long as it's not a one-possession game which it hasn't been an oracle, I would expect that the Raptors are going to mm. wrap this up. Okay. Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm about to give old Rick Buecher an amen because I agree. <laughs> mm. Skip Bayless, mm. everything over but the shouting. Mm. The benediction will be given tomorrow. Mm. Now, you keep telling me, look, the Warriors made 23s and they won by a point. You keep telling me they have yet to play a clean game, but game five was the cleanest game of all the games they played in the playoffs. They've been loose with the basketball. They average about 17 turnovers. A mm. couple of games, they were in the 18. Mm. So this is who they are, Skip. The question yeah. is, do you believe they'll make 20 more threes in order to stave this off? I do not. I do not believe that now there's no Kevin Durant that's going to allow Clay and Steph to relax, that's going to space the court. So now they can go back to say, we don't have to worry about KD. Kawhi's not going to have to exert any extra energy on the defensive end trying to worry about KD. Because I believe that affected his offensive end because KD got it going so early, um, he had to spend a lot of his time worried about 
how do I shut this off and it affect this offensive end? That won't be the case tomorrow night, Skip Bayless. Hmm. Look, I already know what they're going to do. They're going to bring out E-40. They're going to bring out Oak Town 357, Too Short, Mac Drake. Even MC Hammer will be in the house. He will be. But it's going to be all for naught. Mm. It's going to be all for naught, Skip. Mm. Unfortunately, the last thing that people will remember about Oracle is that Toronto took the Warriors over their knee and closed the building down with a spanking of the Warriors' butt. Really? Boy, I hope the Warriors are watching yep. right now. Because that, that <laughs> yeah, I hope they really watch well it too. in that locker room. Now, well, I hope they watch it when you bet me four cases. of the Raptors. Wow, I love that. Yeah. So my yeah. partner, Shannon Sharp, has already informed me he gives Golden State no more than a 7 to 10% chance of winning tomorrow night. That is correct. In the finale at Oracle. Yeah. 7 to 10%. Yet, I don't know how this is happening, but Golden State remains a 2.5-point betting favorite in the game. Who knows how that could be? I don't know. Because you both make very strong points. I will agree. I have zero evidence that Golden State can win this game. Mm. When I look back at the three games they've played at Oracle this basketball season versus this team, because mm -hmm. they've lost all three of them. And games, to, to your point, three and four, Toronto dominated those yep. games. T Toronto terrorized them at home. Th they could not keep Lowry or Van Vliet from the basket. And once they just, just penetrate the lane, it, it's chaos and they're getting shots, wide open threes here, there, and everywhere. And Toronto is too long. They're just too tall for Golden State. So I give you all of the above, but I'm going to tell both of you what I told Rob Parker. He's pro Raptors. He had Raptors in six. He's sticking with it. This is his night of nights. You guys are ready to celebrate. <laughs> The deeper you get into a finals, the smaller the basket looks to the underdog team. And I don't care what you say, the underdog is still Toronto. Mm. And as the closeouts keep getting deeper and deeper, we should have closed out five. Now we got to close out six to stop a game seven back in our place. The basket just starts looking small to three-point shooters. This series has been decided each game by who made the most threes. Sure. I believe Golden State, especially in the grand finale at Oracle, when, when they know for sure this is it, there's no more KD and there's no more Oracle, this is it, they'll make more three-point shots. If they could make this a small ball game, mm -hmm. which is their strength, and clearly the Raptors can play some of that, but the real advantage they have over the Warriors is playing with size. Big. But not having mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, who started at center. He did. In, in, in game five. And he blocked a big shot early. Kavon Looney mm -hmm. coming in. Yep. There's some question as to whether he's going to be available. That's a huge difference. Now you have to play DeMarcus Cousins. Now you have to play Andrew Bogan. Mm -hmm. Now you have to play the Raptors game. Yep. And when you have those guys on the floor, now suddenly Marcus Saul and his ability to shoot the three versus the other two bigs, mm -hmm. it shifts that dynamic a little bit. It shifts the advantage that the Warriors have in being able to play fast and small, and it goes back to Toronto and what they were able to do and why they've been able to dominate, mm. whether it's Oracle or any place else. And here's the reality. I, I've been in Oracle from the beginning. I saw what it was when it started. There was an intimidation factor, no doubt about it. They would hit a couple threes. The, the crowd wouldn't even wait for the threes. Mm -hmm. They were already buzzing. And then when they would hit a couple threes, it would take it, it to another it level. Yep. Now you have an audience that sits there and they're waiting for the Warriors to get them going. Mm. They're not providing the energy. They're asking the team to get them excited. I, I agree with that, except for tomorrow night. I think it'll be different because everybody knows this is the end. Right? I, I, yeah, I would have hoped to have seen that in you know? game four, mm -hmm. and I did not. Skip, let me ask you this. Do you believe Boogie Cousins will give you in game two and five Will he give you that in game six? And can the Warriors keep Toronto off the glass? That's where Toronto stays in the series at. That is that they miss, they get multiple cracks at it because they're killing them on the offensive glass. So do you believe Boogie can give you in games two and five, give you that in game six, Skip? Because we have not seen him put games together like that. You got me. I don't trust him. Yeah. And I, how can, I'm just being honest with you. Every time the ball's in his hands, I'm flinching, wincing, looking the other way because I'm <laughs> fearful something bad will happen. And the other night, six good things happened because he made six baskets that I didn't think he could make. Yeah. He's going to have to play bigger. I don't know if Kevon Looney can just suck it up and just play through his pain. 
because he got shut down the other night, but but I think he'll try to go. I just have a feeling, and he makes them much better. Does. Fabulous mm -hmm. insight, gentlemen. We will find out tomorrow night. Rick, thanks so much for being here. You got it. Way to go. Still to come, will the Raiders be must-see TV on uh -huh. Hard Knocks this upcoming season? We'll discuss next. <laughs>